the appearance of a Buddha, a perfectly awakened one who teaches the pastoral liberation, is the rarest event in the universe. And the Buddha himself says from his recollection of previous lives that sometimes for 30 or, or even 60 eons no Buddha will arise in the universe. So that's a time span of many billions of years. And so it's not surprising that the Bodhisattva, the being who would later become the Buddha, had already some special qualities at the time of his birth, and that his birth was accompanied by special events. Usually if we talk about somebody's life story, then we start with the birth. Um, but because that seems to be the beginning of it, but the Buddha says that's around the free birth, Sangsara is beginningless. But whatever conditioned phenomena there are, they're all always caused by other conditioned phenomena. And because of that, if the origination of conditioned phenomena doesn't have a first beginning, a first starting point. Um, on the other hand, Nibbana, the unconditioned, doesn't give rise to any conditioned phenomena. It doesn't cause anything. <coughs> and so the story of the life of the Buddha and the causes that led to his awakening, they unfolded over many lifetimes and culminated in the last life of the Buddha. Um, when he was born in northern India, in Lumbini, Today actually would be Nepal, but it's almost in India. <laughs> and the birth of the Buddha is also the end of the prehistoric period of in India. Um, before that time, we can only, like, only quite vaguely say when something happened, maybe a few hundred years or 500 years difference but there's not really a, a history in this sense, which is so clear. And, but yeah, so one could say that the history of India begins with the life of the Buddha. And that's the oldest date in history of India that one can nail down to just a few decades, maybe. And the Buddha probably lived from approximately 480 BC to 400 BC about 2,500 years ago. Yeah, he was born in the kingdom of the Sakyans into a Katya family, often translated as noble warriors. You could also say aristocracy, an aristocratic family. And the Buddha himself says in a discourse, Diga Nikaya 14, the name of my father was King Sudodana. The name of my mother, the giver of birth, was Queen Maya. And the name of my royal capital was Kapilavatu. And the kingdom of the Sakyans was a smaller kingdom north of the Ganges Valley. It was under the rulership of um, the Maharaja of the kingdom of Kosana. That the Buddha himself describes his lineage briefly in, in verse um, when he is asked about it like this. Um, he says, Straight ahead, your majesty, by the foothills of the Himalayas, is a country abundant in energy and wealth, inhabited by Kosalans. The clan is named after the sun, Sakyans by birth. From that lineage I have gone forth. And some relatives of the Buddha, they also say that the Sakyans are proud and fierce people. So they were a noble warrior clan, so one can expect some like, tough, toughness and noble warrior pride or being proud of one's aristocratic backgrounds of a high um, clan, uh, clan which is from a um, high caste. 
uh, this was just a little bit of historic information. Um, but now back to the marvelous qualities uh, of the uh, events that happened at the birth of the Bodhisattva. They're mostly related in the Majjhima discourse number 123, if you want to read it, mid-length discourses. So where generally the Buddha, when he's referring to himself before his awakening, he is talking about himself about as unawakened Bodhisattva. And so I use the same term, the, the Bodhisattva. Um, and before his last birth, as human being, um, the Bodhisattva was reborn as a divine being, uh, Deva, in Tusita heaven, uh, one of the higher Deva realms, which is still part of the sense realm. And already in his birth as divine being, before I became a human being, his outstanding quality was his mindfulness and clear comprehension, Sati and Sampajanya in Pali. So the, it said the, the Bodhisattva was reborn as a divine being in Tusita Deva realm, <coughs> mindful and clearly comprehending. And then he, um, he lived mindfully, clearly comprehending for the full lifespan in Tusita Deva realm. And also he was able to pass away from the Deva realm, mindfully, clearly comprehending, and then entered the womb of his mother, Queen Maya, also mindful and clearly comprehending. So one can see that already in previous lives he developed a very high level of mindfulness and clear comprehension. And so the Sutta says, when the Bodhisattva enters the womb of his mother, a great immeasurable light appears in the cosmos, surpassing the radiance of the divine beings. And the 10,000 world system um, shakes and trembles. And yeah, we can also understand this metaphorically in the sense that um, that it's the, the Buddha that brings brightness in the world in terms of pointing out the past liberation then later, obviously. Um, yeah, so because of that, some divine beings already notice that something special is happening. And after the conception of the Bodhisattva, then four devas, the rulers of the deva realm closest to the human world, they guard the Bodhisattva and his mother. Yeah, the Buddha also says that some, if someone develops his mind to a higher level, then that person will be similar to devas and attracts their attention and maybe sometimes it's also protected by them. And so that's, was, that's how it was for the Bodhisattva because of his good actions in previous lives. The powerful mind of the Bodhisattva also had a strong influence on his mother during pregnancy. After the, his conception, Queen Maya became naturally virtuous and observed the five precepts. So abstained from killing intention abstained from intentionally killing living beings and from taking what is not given, from sexual misconduct, from lying and from taking drinks and intoxicants. And she also had no intentions of sensuality towards men anymore. It was inaccessible to any man with an impassioned mind. It's generally known that the mother can have some influence on the child during pregnancy. Biologically, for example, if the mother is smoking or drinking or taking drugs, it will have some serious negative effects on the child. Yeah, probably we can also imagine that the child picks up something um, of the mind state of the mother. That for example, if the mother feels safe and peaceful, that the child will also notice that to some extent.
Yeah, but in this case, the Bodhisattva, um, it, in this case, it worked the other way around because of the powerful mind of the Bodhisattva. He had a strong influence on his mother mm. because the two were so close together um, during pregnancy for several months. And so it's also interesting to consider that's not the mind of a if a human being gets reborn at the time of conception, it's not just so the mind is not just blank, but um, this being at conception already has some capabilities and tendencies from previous lives. And then in the case of the Bodhisattva, it's not very sort of powerful or capable mind. The Sutta also says that Queen Maya was um, without illness or affliction during a pregnancy and spoiled and provided with everything that she needed materially by the king. Um, Queen Maya was not a Sakyan, but um, she came from another noble warrior clan. She was a Korean princess. After she married King Sudodana, um, she moved to Kapilavatu, to the capital of the Sakyans, to live together with her husband, the king. But then, when the time of birth came closer, Queen Maya returns to her hometown, uh, Devadaha, in the country of the Koreans, um, yeah, to be together with her own mother and her family um, when she gave birth. At the time of the Buddha, when women uh, married, they would usually move to the, they would move from their own family to the home of the family of the husband, live together with the family of the husband. Um, and obviously, most people probably feel more safe and at ease if you're with your own family rather than with the in-law family. <laughs> um, so it was common that um, women would then go back to their um, own family at that time. Mm. <coughs> yeah, so at that time, um, when the time of birth came closer, then Queen Maya was traveling from the capital of the Sakyans, Kapilavatu, then back to the capital of the Koreans, Devadaha, probably together with an entourage of servants and some maybe some relatives who also came with her. Um, However, then labor started already on the way to her home um, and close to the village Lumbini. The pregnancy was unusual, unusually long, exactly 10 lunar months instead of 9 months. The Bodhisattva was born in nature and Queen Maya gave birth to the Bodhisattva while standing, according to the later stories, while holding on um, a branch of an Ahsoka tree. Interestingly, I read in some footnotes of a book that, according to the Royal College of Midwives, that standing, giving birth standing would be a safe position if um, the involved people are prepared for it. Um, and so, then when the Bodhisattva is born, first divine beings receive him, the four rulers of the heavenly realm, close, closest to the human world. And they, they set the Bodhisattva on the ground in front of the mother and say, Rejoice, O Queen, a son of great abilities has been born to you. Then the Bodhisattva, standing on the ground, is facing north and walks seven steps and surveys all directions and utters the <coughs> words of the leader of the herd. I'm the highest in the world. I'm the best in the world. I'm the foremost in the world. This is my last birth. Now there is no more becoming. 
and also at the birth of the Bodhisattva a great immeasurable light appears in the cosmos surpassing the divine beings and the 10,000 world system shakes and trembles just like on the, at the conception of the Bodhisattva. The Buddha says this happens at six occasions during the life of the perfectly awakened one. So after Venerable Ananda is tell talking about these various wonderful events that happened before and during the birth of the Bodhisattva, then the Buddha tells him he should also remember another wonderful and marvelous quality of the Buddha. This marvelous quality is that feelings, perceptions and thoughts are known to the Buddha as they arise, um, as they remain and as they pass away. Yeah, so for usually we would consider this maybe less marvelous than the other things, but um, I think the, the Buddha is pointing out that his mindfulness and clear comprehension and his other outstanding inner qualities that he developed in previous lives. Um, these are the, the reason for the wonderful events that happens during his conception and birth. Yeah, so for example, because the Bodhisattva had mindfulness and clear comprehension in his previous life as divine being in Tusita Deva realm, and then he passed away there. And then during his conception and pregnancy, for example, he was already able to use his body because he already had maintained mindfulness and clear comprehension during that time. And <coughs> Yeah, so it's a, at least the, the looking at the story of the Buddha in terms of the long-term um, development of qualities that he did in, in several lifetimes. It's also very encouraging for us in the sense that if we make punya, if we do good actions, if we practice generosity, virtue, have knowledge of the teaching, develop samadhi, develop wisdom, then the force of these good actions will always have some good results in this life and in future lives and maybe many lifetimes. And this is the law of nature. And so the Bodhisattva is the most outstanding example for that. For just another example, he, he says in one discourse that in a previous life as human being, he developed loving-kindness meditation for seven years and then as a result he was not reborn in the sense realm anymore for seven eons and even then after the seven eons it still had some impact on his um, rebirth that he experienced so yeah, if you if you think oh, I'm just practicing for two years or three years then that one doesn't know can have a very powerful impact over many um, lifetimes and um, yeah so it's also good sometimes to have this perspective on one's dharma practice that obviously one can notice some results in this life but then also these good actions have some long-term effect queen maya passed away seven days after the birth of the Bodhisattva and was reborn in Tusita Deva realm. So the Deva realm where the Bodhisattva came from. So the Buddha passes away as Deva, comes to Queen Maya to be reborn as human being and gets born and then the mother passes away and gets reborn in the Deva realm where the Bodhisattva came from. So interesting um, of, um, unfolding of events. <laughs> Um, the second wife of King Sudodana, Queen Mahapachapati, uh, brought up the Bodhisattva baby. Um, she was Queen Maya's sister. Um, and she brought up, she brought up the Bodhisattva just like her own son in the suttas. Even it says with her own milk.
the Lumbi <coughs> Lumbini, the place where these marvelous events of the birth of the Bodhisattva took place, was discovered by archaeologists about 130 years ago. Um, already in 250 BC, so about 2300 years ago, King Ahsoka visited Lumbini on pilgrimage and he um, had a great sandstone pillar with an inscription erected there to mark the place where the Bodhisattva was born for future millennia. So he had this sort of aspiration or this far-sighted um, building program um, that we can still uh, identify these holy sites. Mm, yeah, today Lumbini is a World Heritage Site and also one of the four most important Buddhist holy sites. It was de designated as pilgrimage site by the Buddha himself. Yeah, and it's an uplifting and auspicious place to go. So if you're in India, you can visit and yeah, it's one of place where one of the rarest events in the universe happened, the birth of someone who will attain supreme awakening. After <coughs> after his birth, the Bodhisattva was brought back to the city of Kapilavatu, the home of the Sakyans. And yeah, except in the kingdom of the Sakyans, the birth was unnoticed in the human realm. However, many divine beings, devas, already noticed of the great lights that manifested at the conception and birth of the Bodhisattva and also some human beings who had developed some psychic powers, they noticed that some, something special happened. And uh, a short time after the Bodhisattva returns to Kapilavatu, then an old sage comes to visit the Sakyans and he wants to see the newborn child. Um, his name is Asita. And in his meditation, he saw that the Tavating Sativas were especially elated and joyful like never before. And so he asks them why they are so happy. And then the Devas tell him that the Bodhisattva was born and um, will attain awakening and then set in motion the Dhamma wheel um, in sense of teaching the way to liberation. And so that's why they are so happy. And then um, Asita goes to visit the Sakyans. And um, so first, uh, this year Asita receives the baby Bodhisattva, is very happy and elated, but then he gets very sad and starts to cry. Um, so the Sakyans are worried and ask him whether he foresees any misfortune for the young prince. Um, Asita tells, th tells them that yeah, there will be no harm for the prince and so he doesn't foresee any danger for him and that is of great significance. Um, that he will realize awakening and um, realize the truth and then teach the path to liberation. But yeah, his own lifespan is already very short. He's already old. And so meanwhile he will die before the Buddha starts to teach. <laughs> um, so that's why he's so, so sad. But then after he left the palace, he has an idea he remembers he has a young relative, his nephew, uh, Naraka. And so he tells him, when you hear others say the Buddha or attaining awakening, practicing the path of Dhamma, then go there and ask him and live the holy life under this blessed one, under this teacher. And so he prepares his young nephew that at least he gets the chance to hear the teaching of the Buddha and practice the Dhamma even though he, he can't do it himself. And so, yeah, later Nalaka then um, goes to see the Buddha and yeah, um, has a conversation with him and, and becomes a monk. And the story is in the Sutta Nipata. Yeah, so we are more fortunate than the old sage Asita because we have still the opportunity to hear the Dhamma of the, the teaching of the Buddha and have some time to practice it. Um, and 
Yeah, so no need to wait for a better opportunity to practice in realize the Dhamma. And yeah, can also do that today by practicing the recollection of the Buddha and meditating together, chanting together. <laughs>